Welcome to another episode of the WG Podcast, and I'm here with my my pet loving friend. I do love pets. Got Lee. too many. <laughs> He's not quite as furry as his dogs because <laughs> he grooms. Yes, it's I my do. colleague, Occasionally. real estate expert Lee Taylor. I'm Jason. Greetings, Lee Lott, JW. And thank you, sir. And we are live as always, recorded live mm -hmm. in studio here in North Atlanta. We're real estate experts with the Wheelock Group at Compass, one of the most eclectic and I'd say interesting collection of characters in the business. You only see two of us every week. Well, that's two. Yeah. But we're there's a, a whole slew of us. And yeah. we're here to bring you all things Atlanta and real estate related every week here on the podcast. And we are finally getting a little bit of cooler it felt nice weather. This weekend. And that's uh that's what leads me into um, what the WG is up with mm -hmm. you, Lee, other than a little bit more mild weather. Um, well, uh, autumn, which I love. Autumnal love. greetings, Jason. Do what? Autumnal. I was thinking of autumn. Oh, how about that? It ain't yet. It ain't there Such yet. A September 21. Conjugation. There. I believe it's September 21. It my is. birthday, September 28th, I'll be 55. Don't know how to celebrate my birthday right now. What do you do? What, what, what am I supposed to do with my birthday celebration? Um, I would say bring six to eight of your closest friends over with masks on. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, Jason. Seem, it seems like the, <laughs> Go from there. imagine if I had ever answered that way in any other year, it would have been like, what a weirdo. Well, I think weirdo. I'll, I think I'll just spin it with my lovely wife, Mary. <laughs> there you go. It's a little yeah. less, a little less weird. That exactly. Way. So, but that pretty much is what your options are I know. in 2020. Mm. Um, and so we move on down the lane towards the end of the third quarter of this wacky year. This week, we're going to have a very special guest, Ellie Gonzalez. She is the foster care coordinator for Pause Atlanta. And Pause Atlanta is an animal shelter here locally over in DeKalb County mm -hmm. on the east side of town. Right. And they are a wonderful locally based animal shelter that we are supporting in the months of September, parts of August into September and October for every like on our Instagram page at Wheelock Group on Instagram and Facebook.com slash Wheelock Group. That's W-I-E-L-O-C-H for those of you that mm -hmm. need help spelling that. We will give a dollar to them. And we're also um, giving proceeds from every single closing that we have through October as well. Good. So we're really excited to give to a really great organization because there's a lot of cute cats and dogs out there that need homes. They have really built a beautiful shelter out there, Jason. Let's get Ellie on. Yeah. So I'm going to welcome Ellie on the show and we're going to talk to her and hopefully our technology work. We had a little bit of a, a sound check issue earlier, folks. No, we're just so techy. Hello, Ellie. Are you there? Ellie? Hello. Hi. We did it. No sound problems. <laughs> How's it going? Doing well. How are you guys doing? Very good. You know, that's kind of the universal question we're all asking each other, and we've all run out of answers to well, these days, you know? You know, you have every day it's, above ground is a good day, Jason. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, well, we know that you're busy over there at Pause. We're busy in the real estate business, and that's one redeeming quality. If you do have something to do during your waking hours that's purposeful during COVID-19, it makes life a lot easier. Essential services so, like pet care yeah, and humane society work. Cer or exactly. Certain things just continuously have needs and keep going regardless <laughs> of what we're faced with. Right. And we felt this summer that supporting your organization, um, it was the perfect timing and a great way for us to give back because we're having such a great year in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we wanted to bring you on to sort of give life to what your organization does. And you're the foster care coordinator over there, right? Yes. I've been in that position right at a year now, officially. Um, I worked in kennels for a year and a half and then promoted into this position. So I've been with PAWS, what? going on three years now. I left okay. a corporate nine to five 401k job for this and I've been so happy with it. So tell us a little bit 
about what you do as the foster care coordinator? What is your day-to-day duty or duties? So my COVID day-to-day life is I'm working from home three days a week. And during those three days, I'm doing Zoom calls, doing home inspections. I'm reviewing foster applications. I'm pairing up foster homes with potential foster animals and negotiating appointments for vaccinations and spay and neuter and everything that you could think of medically. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once those three days are over, Friday and Saturday, I'm at the shelter all day. And that's when I'm meeting fosters that we've set up appointments for to introduce them to their potential fosters, whether that be cats or dogs. So you're like a matchmaker. Yes. um, Adoptions and foster the same way. We take a lot of time to think about what the human half of the situation needs and what the animal half of the situation needs to try to make the best match. So A, everybody's happy, B, everyone's safe, and C, if all of those things come together and it's a good placement, everyone gets the most out of it. You, If you put a high energy dog with someone who can't let out all that energy efficiently, then they're going to be unhappy, potentially become destructive in the home and chew up their favorite chair or something, you know, and nobody loves that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like dating. If the dog's a couch potato, we need to match him with one, right? In a <laughs> yes, yes. And the better matches we have, the happier the foster is in the home, the foster animal. And then, I mean, A, that's just, that's just good for them to be happy in the home, but we also get to see their true personality when mm everything goes well and that way we better know how to match them for a future home a forever how long is a foster home on average or is there a minimum and i guess maximum what would that be there's no maximum uh, we've had some animals in foster for years and most wow. of their hospice fosters um or they might not be hospice where they're in their sunset days but their care is so complicated that we don't feel safe just adopting them to Mm -hmm. anyone. So they stay with us for the rest of their life. Um, But usually it's only a few months. Our minimum is about two weeks is what we ask. And that can be from two weeks and then they get adopted the next day. They could be with you for only a few days if they get adopted quickly. There's no average, especially with COVID life that's changed up our rates of adoption pretty drastically in a good way. In a good way. That's what I thought. I, I'd read there had been a significant amount, but did it spike and then stop or did you have a steady rise all year? There was a definite spike, at least in fostering. Um, to put this in perspective, making my goals for March at the end of February, my goal was to place six to eight animals for the whole month of March. And then in one week in March, we placed 110 animals. Wow. <laughs> that, was, that was the crazy week where everyone really realized that COVID was here to stay and it was a real thing. And we were trying to clear out the shelter so that, God forbid, our staff got sick. We would have a small enough number on site that we'd be able to maintain it. Um, and we had a huge outpouring of people that were willing to help and a lot of those fosters ended up adopting but since that 110 week it's been about eight to ten placements a week since then which is still so much more than it was pre-covid wow man i thought the real estate market was on fire yeah, no kidding. <laughs> our adoptions nice. have been doing really well too they definitely spiked at the beginning of covid but they've pretty much leveled out um our Staff meeting last month, uh, we were 95% to goal for where we wanted to be in August. Wow. That's for the month or for the year? For the year to date from January to August, we were 95% to where we wanted to be. And that's great. We've also been closed the entire month of April. We did no adoptions, no fostering. And the entire month of July, same thing. Oh, wow. We had um, COVID exposures and needed to 
pause for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that sets, so what is it that sets pause apart, right? I mean, people hear animal shelters and it's, it can be a sort of generalized term, right? In many people's minds. So what is it about your mission that makes you all unique? Well, something, it's not our mission per se, but first thing that makes us different than say animal control, we are a private rescue. So we receive zero government funding. We are run 100% by uh, grants and donations. So you see larger entities like Lifeline Animal Project mm -hmm. is DeKalb County and Fulton County Animal Control. So even though our goal is the same thing, we have to operate completely differently. Um, and, and what makes that distinct of like, why is that something that's important for someone potentially adopting to know? Or does it, or is there something that makes a difference, a government funded versus non-government funded shelter like yours? We're able to make our own decisions on how we want to run, which part of that is being a no-kill shelter. Right. Um, we aren't the largest, but we are the oldest no-kill shelter in the state of Georgia. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. We've been around over 50 years now um, and on that same piece of property since the 70s. So it's awesome. It's something that we pride ourselves on. It's quite a piece of land on Covington Highway. It's beautiful. And they've built out the back with a bunch of new shelter spaces. And it's a really, really nice shelter. We have, I think, four acres or so. And a large majority of it is a wooded off-leash area, a wooded nature trail, and we're, we have a larger space that we cleared out recently, and we're trying to figure out what we're wanting to do with it, but um, I don't know what the end result will look like, but the goal for that space is to be an enrichment area, so have places to do maybe agility or some mm -hmm. other training or have small play groups, something in that realm for that space. And we have each, almost every dog has a designated outside kennel. So when the weather's appropriate, they get to go spend time outside. And then once their inside area is clean, they go back inside for the rest mm -hmm. of the day, which is something different that most animal shelters, whether it's a public run or a private, they have only indoor spaces for their animals. So that's something else that I think sets paws apart is just what we're physically able to offer. Mm -hmm. Do you have particular breeds that are either in high demand or even one that sort of is tougher to get people to adopt? Anything 10 pounds and under is high demand and people don't even really care what breed that is. A lot of people just want tiny hmm. dogs. And in the world of rescue, they don't happen very often, not just paws, but it's hard to find a Yorkie Maltese tiny poodle thing in a rescue. <laughs> Lee, I could see you with a tiny poodle. No, I've got enough. <laughs> and my, then, my four foot king snake would not get along with it. Ooh. Yeah, that could be a little sketchy. Yeah, that, <laughs> you know, the, this is part of the screening process when he comes in to adopt him so. Yes, but the hardest to place <clears throat> are the pit bull type dogs and that's usually no fault of their own. It, I was having a conversation with the home inspection that I did earlier today. Um, so many places that are available for rent have breed restrictions and that cuts out a lot of opportunities for those animals. Probably perception sometimes too, right? Yeah, which fortunately I come across more people who aren't allowed to have them versus wouldn't consider them. Interesting. So when you do a home inspection, you're doing an inspection of a foster home, potential foster home. Is that right? Correct. Um, that is per Department of Agriculture. So I have a checklist that I'm going through. And mm -hmm. long story short, it's just making sure that the home is safe and clean and mm -hmm. has running water, electricity, all these basics that you would want and expect a home to have to safely place an animal in. And we do that because a foster home is an extension of our shelter. So while that animal is in our care, wherever they're residing needs to fall under the same criteria that we would. 
Ellie, if we ever encounter something that's like endangered pets, is it always animal control the first call or what, what do you recommend as realtors? Yes, for sure. It has to be animal control. Um, we have a lot of people bring a stray animal to our gate and ask us to take them in. And I understand because they're afraid of what might happen to them at animal control. But legally, animal control is the first place that they would need to go. Um, and that's just one of the most simple reasons is if that pet has a home, they would need to go to animal control to find them. And if just any and every rescue could take them in, it'd be hard to find that home again. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely call animal control. And animal control, if something is going on with that animal where it's neglect or abuse or what have you, that's important that animal control knows about it. So the proper legal routes could be taken if need be. And use like PAWS, we pull from um, Fulton and DeKalb County and some other Metro Atlanta animal controls. So just because that animal goes into animal control doesn't necessarily mean that they will never leave. Right. They in DeKalb, Fulton County have a high likelihood of being adopted out. I've read that too. A rescue. Lee, the, t the team really turned me on to pause in the last couple of months when we started this drive. And I didn't realize you've been over there so many times, mm -hmm. like a, what, a dozen plus I've, times? Yeah, you've been probably at least. Uh, my daughter, who's now 12, um, ever since she was a little girl, um, we would go to pause because it's, it's close by. I live in Decatur and the, uh, you know, the property is so beautiful, Jason. It's just a really, really nice shelter. And it's not like going to an interior one, like she said, Lifeline. Right. Um, it's it's way more ergonomically built for the dogs and cats. And they, she like loves going to the cats. She loves cats, and I don't like cats. I don't love mm -hmm. my cats. But she has cats. You're a pretty cool cat. She has cats at her aunt's house, and she loves playing with cats. But we got dogs, we got snakes, we got bunnies, everything but cats. But she loves the cat house, and that's she also went to the camps there. So she probably went to camp four or five times over two or three summers. And uh, camp is awesome because you get to really, really participate in the, you know, overall, the kids can really, really take on a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. You, know? you truly do run an animal house I do. where you live. I, I, yeah. I, you know what? I'm a big supporter of animals, but I just can't get over the fact that you have a king snake in your house. Yeah. That is just. That was a concession such, made around Christmas last year. So bizarre. And do you enjoy this slithering? <laughs> I uh, I wear a leather jacket and gloves like, usually when I handle it. I just I'm a little bit fearful of it. Yeah, who wouldn't be? It's not a little <laughs> bit crazy. Now you don't take in snakes over there at Paws, right? No, we do have a resident king snake that lives around the property. But yeah, leave him be, and he leaves us be. He eats all the rodents. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> he protects yeah. the food shed. He's a constrictor and he's probably a pretty good guy. One thing I know about having cats, because we had cats and dogs at various times growing up in my house, but when you have cats, you never have a rodent problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. Whenever we had cats, there was nothing to be, they, it was like yeah, building they're fierce. a moat. They're fierce. So yes. that is the one benefit. The challenge with cats, I know a lot of people love them, but man, do they tear some stuff up in your I know. house. Well, what's wonderful about the Paws Shelter is their cat house is is like four or five rooms. They're all very filled with cats, having a great time, doing exactly what you just described, Jason. They, they like to scratch on posts. They like to play with each other. They have a great time. And these are fun places to go with kids uh, where you can just take them in each room and there's just a unique personality with eight or ten cats. It's fun. Yes. So Ellie, if I wanted to adopt a dog in the coming months, because the team thinks I need a yeah, you companion over here yep. to hang out when mm -hmm. I'm not in studio, <laughs> um, a dog that would be, let's call it medium size. I'm in a townhome, right? So having a really <laughs> large dog isn't practical for me. Uh, so maybe like a medium sized dog, one that it doesn't shed too much, right? And is friendly, yet is also a little bit on the independent side and because hmm. I'm in and out of the house a good hmm. bit throughout the day hmm. or I'm out in the field a good bit. Although I am home what does a Ellie lot in the think? afternoon too. So I may actually be a good candidate for a dog that is social, but I like to travel. So that's the only thing I'm worried about when COVID comes. You can get yourself a pet sitter, Jason. That's one of the fancy things. that you can, My mom will stay here for free and pet and dogs. Like, that's we get beauty. a pet, we get a pet sir who comes and stays in our house. Yeah, really? You can get your mom to do it and she'll she stay. Loves, for like, she loves dogs. Yeah. 
So, yes. yes, Ellie, what do you recommend for yes. Jason? Sorry, I'll, I'll try. If you were wanting to adopt that type of dog, what you would do is you go to our website and we have a tab for adoption and then under that tab it's dogs and cats and you'll find the appropriate application for dogs and cats under each page. Oh, I Take can filter. The application, fill it out and email it to info at posatlanta.org that goes to our adoption counselors. They would review your application and um, if it's approved, then they would move on to the next steps of finding the right dog that we have at the shelter for you and talk about who you'd wanna meet. And then they would make an appointment for you to come to the shelter to meet said dog or cat right now. Um, now that's remarkable, Jason. That is matchmaking 101. Is, is there a chance I won't be approved? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> but in the process, uh, really similar for fostering also, getting you nervous. find the application under the foster tab, but you would email it to foster at positlanta.org, and I would review your application, and then we would set up a home inspection, and if your application and home inspection are both approved, we would talk about who you'd want to meet and then you'd meet them at the shelter by appointment. We don't have any walk-ins available right now for adoptions and fostering. It's appointment only. Wow. It means you have a great organization. So, mm -hmm. and we're used to doing home inspections. So I think I'm prepared for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, well, pauseatlanta.org. That's the website folks to visit and fill out a form to adopt one, adopt one of these cats or, or dogs or foster. <laughs> In the rest of 2020, I know a lot of us are looking for companions and things to do, uh, and a dog or cat can fill that void, and it can fill a void for them as well. So that's why we're supporting PAWS, because not only do people need a home, as we help everyone in our business, um, animals do as well. So we love what y'all are doing over there. We're excited to support you at this juncture of the year. And we look forward to um, a continued relationship and hopefully a number of our clients will respond and see this and submit an application as well. And hopefully they won't be rejected. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. And we really appreciate the support. Like I mentioned earlier, we're doing really well in foster placement numbers and adoption placement numbers, but where we're struggling is the fundraising. We've had to cut out a lot of things that we would normally use like Lee mentioned the summer camps. That was a big point of income for us during the summer. Um, we just recently reopened our vaccine clinics and that's a huge piece that would bring in a good bit of money for us. And all these other smaller programs that were a regular reoccurring thing can't happen mm -hmm. in COVID life. Um, and of course, a lot of people have been hit pretty hard financially by COVID. So we don't have as many donations coming in as we used to. Right. So even though we're doing really well in a lot of areas, um, donations are where we're struggling the most. Well, we'll hopefully help you pick up the slack in that area and yeah. we're calling on all of our clients to do the same. So we are so happy that you were able to come on. Thank you for all that you do. And um, we enjoy, you know, we enjoy being a part of it. So thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you, Ellie. Appreciate you guys. All right. Well, Lee, I really am just enamored by what they what they do, especially the fact that you think of an animal shelter like a prison. Yeah. And they have this huge property. They do. It's some, like a farm. It is, and it's no kill, Jason. That's the other distinction I, I should have told you up front, but I'm glad she mentioned it because it's probably the biggest distinction. But their land is just sweet. They got a nice property right off Covington Highway. You know, I admittedly have never owned my own dog. I had dog a dog via my parents growing up. I had a dog via my roommate, John Jennings, who's also a client. And my, um, my previous relationship also had a dog, but I've never had my own. Pup. Well, Jason. So I don't know. Maybe I need to go down to Paws Atlanta. I think you should match it up. And, and play a little matchmaker. I think it'd be fun. And maybe one of these dogs will swipe right on. And you may be the pit, pit bull owner, which I know will be very popular as you walk around. You just have a big old smiling pit bull. 
Some people have called me that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got that. The Georgia, you're not the Georgia pit bull. Who's that guy on the billboard? Oh, I forget. The Weinstein firm, the Georgia pit bull. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, we're trying to, we're putting on a different image here, folks. So there I am giving, was... giving like a, a, a promo to a law firm here on our website, on our uh, podcast, Jason. Now, we should have people paying us for this media time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, listen, man, uh, not, not always is it about business and real estate and folks, we know that you come here to listen and hear about home buying and selling, but we like to be involved and engaged in this community. And so we are donating, like we said at the beginning of this episode, all, not all proceeds, but a portion of proceeds from every closing through October towards pause, as well as a dollar per like to our Facebook and Instagram page. And those can add up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. We're getting quite a few likes every day. So keep it going. And if you've already liked, then share with a friend and let them like. And if you would like to make a personal donation to Pause Atlanta, I'm certain you can go to their website. Like we said earlier, pauseatlanta.org. And let's keep these folks going because any nonprofit is probably struggling with donations right now, yeah. given that everyone's holding you know, their money a little tighter. It's a nervous time and there's folks that have been unemployed. So in the meantime, we are here as your real estate professionals and as a friendly reminder, every week, not only does our team specialize in Atlanta real estate, whether it's your buying or selling residential needs, we have the very best professionals that we personally have developed relationships with across the United States via our Compass Network. Any major city you could think of, we're probably there and I probably know somebody or Lee does or somebody on our team on a first name basis. So we can connect you if you're not in Atlanta or moving out of Atlanta or if you have friends in other cities that need a great professional. So many people find their agents via online ads you know, whether it's a Zillow, Redfin, something like, and that's not disparaging those sites, but it's paid ad space, right? So we're actually, we have gone and vetted folks and we're just going to give you the name and send you to them. And that's part of our value proposition as real estate pros. That's right, JW. So anyway, folks, we're glad that you came on and listened to another episode of the WG podcast. We will be back next week with more fun and, uh, more knowledge and wisdom as always. Drop in science. All right, take care, everybody.